Good morning, everybody. This is a, uh, a very special opportunity for me. Uh, my friends at Galpin, where I have bought uh, many cars, uh, called me last night and said, look, we've got the only Lotus Evora 400 in the country, and you can be the first person to drive it, and you get 15 minutes. So uh, worth the wake up early, and uh, I'm on a road uh, that I have not really been on before. Uh, there's a bunch of cyclists on it. We're a little limited by road choice today, but we're gonna do it anyway. So the Avora 400, this is the fastest production Lotus ever. It has a 400 horsepower supercharged V6 from a Camry, uh, 300 pounds of torque. This one has a six speed manual transmission. And uh, for a first time, believe it or not, this, this blew my mind. For the first time ever in a Lotus, a limited slip differential in the uh, in the manual transmission cars only. Uh, you can get it in an automatic. Thank God this one is a stick. Uh, this one's around a hundred grand, and uh, you know designed to go after Carreras and that kind of stuff. So I'm really actually very comfortable in here for perhaps the first time ever in a Lotus. If I move the seat all the way back, I can barely even touch the pedals. As a matter of fact, so I got to sit up here, which is which is great. The interior uh, is the nicest interior I've ever seen in a Lotus, uh, which is which is great. And uh, so now let's see how it drives. Okay, we are in sport mode, and uh, let's do this. That sounds good. It's got a valve and exhaust. So the Camry engine sounds the best it's ever sounded by far. Uh, we're gonna have to look out for cyclists today. Steering is still hydraulic, but it is beautiful. Pedals are close together, but my dumb feet can still uh, can still work them. Very smooth engine. Very few vibrations. Now we're stuck behind a Camry, but in a second, uh, this uh, road's about to open up into two lanes. Oh, but look, he's letting me by. Brilliant. Listen to that. Wow. Uh, obviously, the car is mid-engine. It's very light, 3,100 pounds. So it has about the same power to weight as a uh, the outgoing Porsche Carrera S. Um, this look at this group group of cyclists, big group. Fortunately, look at this two lanes, luxury living. Wow. Lots of cyclists, okay. The steering is very light. It feels super solid in here. Okay, some neat things about the Evora 400. It's the fastest production Lotus ever. It, uh, it uses a double wishbone suspension, front and rear, which is like old school race car stuff. A lot of people are not doing that anymore. They're using McPherson struts now, but that this is a good design because as you load up the suspension in a corner, you actually get more camber as opposed to less camber. Pilot Super Sport tires, very sticky at the front end. This thing has AP racing brakes, four piston all around, uh, 14 inches in the front, 13 inches in, a rear, in the rear. They're, uh, they're an inch bigger than the old car. Wow. Where has this thing been in my life? How have I never driven any Evora before? This is nice. Shifter is just a nice little snick snick. As we go through this area here. How do I turn the heat down, man? It is cold, or hot in here, I should say. This road's kind of bumpy, but this thing takes it super well. Wow, on the blips, it revs up unbelievably fast. Oh man, look at this. We have hit traffic. Okay, this isn't going to be good. Uh, all right, I'll pause. I'll get us a gap. Hang on. Be back. We're going to have to get around these cyclists again. I apologize for that, but it's a busy morning up here. All right, you want to ride in the middle? I'm going to pass. The power delivery is very smooth and even. The uh, supercharger is by Edelbrock, and it now has a charge cooler, which gets you the extra 50 horsepower over the uh, Avora S. Oh, great.
great power delivery, really even, really predictable. Must have a very light flywheel because it revs up really quick on the blips. Man, this thing is loving this road. I am loving this road. Beautiful. God, this is great. Brake pedal feel is really good. It's not grabby like a ceramic is. It's very predictable. Ow. The car, it, it, it feels advanced and simple at the same time. You know, it's one of those things where the chassis is really tight, so uh, they don't have to make the shocks super stiff, so it actually does ride pretty well on the bumpy road. And then when you start to push it, it loads up and gets through that corner just beautifully. All right, I'm not gonna wanna sit behind this guy, so we're gonna have to turn around, I guess. Stop ahead. Uh, the gauges are very, very clear, easy to read. They give you the right information. They've actually, aside from the aftermarket stereo, they've, they've gone beyond what I expect from, from Lotus, actually. I cannot believe a Camry engine sounds this good. That's nuts. This thing rocks. Wow, I'm, I'm you're you're literally watching me fall in love with this car in real time. Uh, you know, unlike something like a, a GT3, um, which is pretty stiff, it's got a, a beautiful ride, and it's good for tall. Like I could wear a helmet in here. That's awesome. But I can't sit behind these people again, so uh, I'm gonna pull over again and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Okay, let's be honest. For your money, are you know, could you get some more stuff with a Porsche? Yes, this thing doesn't have keyless go, it doesn't have automatic headlights or wipers, it doesn't have cooled seats or any of that jazz. It does, however, bring the Lotus ethos of light, simple, fun, engaging, uh, to a car that actually has a real interior that doesn't feel cheap. I feel like I could probably drive this every day. It's very refined. Look, look, it's got the dual mode exhaust, so I can go quiet now. If I look, see that? Totally quiet. But why would I want to? Let's go back to loud. That's where you want it. Right there. Great throttle response. Really engaging gear shifter. This is wonderful. And fast. I mean, the Exiges and the Exige S's and the, the big power versions of those felt fast, but they were geared so short, you know, that you were constantly shifting. It was very zingy and zippy. This is like proper fast. Like, it's not a toy, you know? Well, an Exige did feel toyish, even if it was fun to drive. It was a little go-kart, basically, with some with a, back, a, a passenger seat, but this is a real car. Look how it handles the camber there. And on this tarmac here, which is not great quality tarmac, look at that. No understeer in the on-camber hairpin. I love how it sounds on the blip. It's got a great little scream to it. It likes braking and turning at the same time. You can trail brake it right down. Where has this car been all my life? This is brilliant. Yay, Lotus! Good for you guys. You know, it's sad that I never drove the original Lotus, so I can't be like, oh, it's it's so much it's so much better than the original Evora. 
it, but this, as my only Avora experience, this is fantastic. It loves to change direction. It loves to change direction on throttle. It loves to change direction on brakes. <sighs> Cornering. Cornering is what it's about. I should add, it also weighs 100 pounds less than the old Evora, which means that when I'm driving it, <laughs> it's the same as the old Evora. Clutch is very light. I imagine you could sit in traffic with this thing and not hate it. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful little car. The all-important turning radius test. Oh my God, the turning radius is great. Well, I guess it's a pass for the Avora 400, huh? Well, I gotta thank my friends at Galpin and, uh, and of course Lotus for this opportunity because I've been, I've been schooled right here in the last 10 minutes. I've been absolutely taken to the school of Avora 400 and it's great. I mean, there's a reason Lotus's conversion rate is so high. 30% of people who test drive their cars buy them. And I want one. Shit. This thing is dope. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.